do you think that Nigeria is on course to that great country that all of us, I dare say, dream about? Reno. Well, I think so. Um, a lot of people tend to be sentimental about it, and we must focus on what cannot lie. We must focus on facts. During the election, during the campaigns, all of the candidates, except Rabbi Mr. Karkas, said they were going to remove subsidy and they were going to float the Naira, all of them. And that's what we expected, because the Buhari regime ought to have done that. They didn't do that. They kept on borrowing $1.5 billion every month to sustain the Naira at the level, sorry, the Naira at the way that it was. And then we're also borrowing to sustain full subsidy. When Bonatti Nebu came in, what he's done is not different from what Waziri Atika or Baka said he was going to do. And what Peter Albi said was going to do. So it amounts to intellectual dishonesty for anybody to begin to come here and then to need to say that, oh, Nigeria is collapsing. No, we're going through some growing pains. We're being winged. But what is happening right now, I support it. Full subsidy had to go. We know the Naira had to be floated. We couldn't have had multiple exchange rates. And we're seeing that the results are happening. I mean, it's very, very clear. Foil importation into Nigeria has reduced from 2.49 billion liters every single day. That was in May. And then in June, it reduced to 1.49. And right now, as I speak to you right now, it has now reduced further to 1.1 billion liters a day. So foil importation into Nigeria has reduced by more than 50%. So that means the removal of foil subsidy has worked. And then also, local refinery has increased by 8%. So that means that we're now getting a backward integration of foil. And it's not just that. If you look at the issue with Nigeria, before foil subsidy was removed, the problem that we had, we we're having trade deficits. I'm sure you saw the figures from the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics, National Bureau of Statistics. Nigeria now has a trade surplus. As at the last time the figures were given in September, we've not seen the next figure for the last quarter of 2023. But for the third quarter of 2023, we had a surplus of 2.2 trillion. So we're seeing results. And it's not just that. Now, capital importation into Nigeria has increased by 66%. So we are actually seeing results. So I mean, it's, it's very, very intellectually dishonest to now say that, oh, that Nigeria is in a terrible situation and we've never been this bad since the Civil War. No. And to say that, that there's no rule of law in Nigeria that is the rule of man, no. Peter Obi went to court. Even in his own petition when he went to the Supreme Court, and even before then, he never alleged that he won the election. Read his petition. I've read it. I don't know if other people who are making these claims have read the petition. He did not say that he won. What he claimed is that the president, Bola Tinubu, could not be president because he had been convicted in the United States at the court in Chicago. That was what he was alleging, and that the vice president, the current vice president, was not properly nominated because he had been nominated twice, once as a senator, and then on the other time as the vice presidential nominee. And in both cases, the court threw that out because on the facts of the law, he was wrong. He did not say that he won. And this is why, I mean, even if you're going to say, okay, everybody is a psychopath, are you going to say Professor Wonisho Inka is a psychopath? Professor Wonishenka, who this man mentioned the civil war, he went to prison for 22 months during the civil war because of Biafra. Are you going to say it's a psychopath? This is a man that said, look, and I'm quoting him, they know they came third. I know they came third. This is what we call in Yoruba, Bajiwe. And that's what they are trying to do. Look, there is the rule of law in Nigeria. This, I mean, they are talking about an electronic transmission of results. Before the election, January, the Labour Party approached the court to say that the court must compel INEC to electronically transmit the results. This is before the election, January. The court looked at the Electoral Act and they ruled against the Labour Party and told them that by virtue of the Electoral Act, INEC is not mandated to electronically transmit the results. Also, in the chamber of the National Assembly, the Senate president at that time, uh, uh, Nawan, said it there that according to the Electoral Act that we passed, INEC is not mandated to transmit the results electronically. Now, during the election, I was for Wazir Atika Obaka. I am still for Wazir Atika Obaka and the People's Democratic Party. But when there is an election, you support your party, you support your candidate. After the election, you support your country. 
Nigeria is moving forward right now, and we have to support Nigeria. You cannot say that Nigeria is now, I mean, it's, it, there's never been a worse time for Nigeria. Nigeria is, uh, uh, I, I'd say, the civil war. The facts on the ground do not hear that out. How many people have been arrested in Nigeria now for, I mean, violating, uh, for hate speech? It's not happening. There's freedom of speech in Nigeria. You go on Twitter and you see the kind of horrible things that people are saying. Some of them are calling for military coups. Some of them are saying that, okay, that there's going to be uh, the kind of Venezuela situation in Nigeria. Have they been arrested? No, they've not been arrested. So for people to say that it's an act, I mean, it's, 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 it, it speaks to their irresponsibility. If you did not win an election, it doesn't mean that you must drag your country down. No, there's another time. I think